Well, hello again, Aviano Baptist Church family. It's good to be with you today. I hope that you're ha having an okay week as you continue to work through this, uh, the restrictions regarding the coronavirus. For those of you who are tuning in today for the, the first time, I'm Gary Preston, the interim pastor. Been here now one month, almost, here in Aviano at the church. And we're excited about what God continues to do here in spite of the unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves. My wife Suzanne and I continue to pray for you and continue to be a part of uh, this journey together here at Aviano Baptist Church in spite of the unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves. I want to bring you another report today of what's going on here at the church and in words of encouragement. We want to look a, a little bit into God's Word together today as well. It's not a, a full-on virtual church service. We're hoping to resume those in person um, early in April. In fact, we're making plans to do that, but we want to stay in touch. And so I've been writing something midweek and putting it on our uh, Facebook Aviano Baptist Church page. I uh, hope you're part of that group to connect that way. And then also here on Sunday with these uh, virtual uh, productions, just to share with you some thoughts and encouragement from God's Word. We want you to stay connected. We want you to know that we're praying for you and we encourage you to pray for one another. I hope that during this time, maybe you've had an opportunity to revamp your own personal schedule. And I know many of you have your children at home. They're no longer in school, uh, so they're at home with you. But I hope you take an opportunity to set a family schedule. Uh, some time for play and fun, of course. Some times for reading and relaxation. Uh, sometimes for homework, school studies, all of those types of things, but also involving some time together as a family to, uh, for spiritual nurture, maybe reading Bible stories, or reflecting on God's Word together, praying with your children, uh, involving the family together. So you make the most of this time, and it doesn't just pass by, and simply uh, the hours go by without a set plan, and really utilizing them as well as you can. As you pray and as you work together and as you connect, I want to encourage you also to stay connected relationally, socially, as you're able to. We talk about social distancing. That's really maybe not the best term. Uh, I prefer physical distancing, but we want to be socially connected. And so I encourage you to do that in whatever ways you can, by phone or email, with Facebook, with social media, that you continue to encourage one another, you share your own needs and you walk together we walk together as a community during this time if we can be of help to you in any sort of way maybe to encourage you to pray for you you just need some uh, human interaction i hope that you'll connect with us here at the church office you can connect with me directly you can also connect with your um, home group leaders be sure that you stay in touch with one another if you haven't heard from someone for some time Maybe it's time to reach out and just say, hey, how are you doing? Are you isolating yourself? Are you connecting? We don't want the time of this physical distancing to create loneliness or a significant aloneness. There's a good time and good opportunity for that, but we want to keep that in balance as well. If you need to reach out to me, you can do so. I'm using the, the uh, church email address at pastor at avianobaptist.church. So you can send me a note, or if you just want to connect and get to know each other a little bit, I would love to hear from you and interact together. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with our deacons here at the church. We again practiced the physical distancing that's being recommended, so we were careful with that. But it was a great time to share together and get to know them better. We prayed together. We prayed for the you and at the church. We discussed plans going forward, what God might doing and be doing, and how to, he might open up the door for us to reconnect very soon. And so we've talked about services on Palm Sunday and Easter and have plans being set for that. I'm also today going to be face, having a FaceTime meeting with our worship leader, Matt, who will be leading when we resume services in April as we talk about Palm Sunday and Easter and various plans uh, for that. So I'm here today at the uh, office uh, at the church and Pastor Barry's office and I want to send this recording. And you know, it's interesting as I sit here and reflect, I know he would love to be a, a, 
part of us. We are continuing to pray for him and Jeannie as they're in the States and uh, planning and making preparations for her surgery. Uh, I know that's a little uncertain because there's talk there now about whether or not surgeries, elective surgeries, will be postponed uh, during the coronavirus outbreak. So uh, would you continue to pray for them for wisdom and direction, uh, God's provision for them while they are there in the States for these three months. You know, this week I received a number of emails, of course, as you are, and a couple of those came through and uh, brought some levity a little bit to the situation of the coronavirus outbreak. And uh, one of those happened to be a, a number of what was termed coronavirus jokes. And I read through those, and I, quite honestly, I had some mixed feelings about them. I thought, well, maybe they're intended to help lighten the, our load a little bit. Maybe to encourage us not to take life and the coronavirus so seriously. But on the other hand, I thought, well, maybe they're not taking it seriously enough. Maybe not looking at it and seeing, uh, is there something that we really need to learn from this? More than just how to survive it. Maybe you've been wondering that too. Other than just surviving the coronavirus and the restrictions that we're under now and the somewhat quarantined conditions, is there some lasting good that needs to come out of this, that God wants to bring out of it in our lives and in our church, and lessons for his kingdom, lessons, kind of kingdom of God lessons that we learn and that we incorporate into our lives, into the church going forward? Well, I want to reflect on that with us for a few minutes today. Perhaps there are some of those long, bigger lessons, longer term lessons that should come into our lives and to the church. Especially if we recognize that uh, history, the pattern of how God has worked in the past, might set the stage for how he wants to use this coronavirus outbreak to strengthen the church, to build our faith to increase our effectiveness for his plan, his purposes to the kingdom of God. As I reflected on that, one specific situation that came to mind was in the early church, the first century church in the book of Acts. I remember there the early church was thriving in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 2, there's a beautiful description of that church and all that God was doing there. The end of Acts chapter 2, we read there that so that those who had received his word in Jerusalem were baptized. And that day there were added about 3,000 people to the church. And the church was meeting together. They were continually uh, devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, we read. And God was doing great things. There was awe, a sense of awe, and signs and wonders were being expressed through the church and there in the city. So much so that uh, the writer Luke concludes that they were praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number daily those who were being saved. And so the, the story continues in chapter 3 of, of Acts. God is doing a, a great work. Good things are happening. People are growing. New people are coming into the family of God. It reminds me of uh, the fulfillment of the vision that even our church has of leading people to love Jesus more and leading more to love Jesus. That's uh, our vision here at Alviano Baptist Church. Helping people love God more, but also helping more people to come into that relationship with God. That's what the church in Acts chapter 2 in Jerusalem was doing. And so the apostles, the leaders of the church, primarily were Peter and John, and they were preaching. And one day they were going to the temple in chapter, Acts chapter 3, and they came across a, a lame beggar. And they stopped and engaged with that man. And God healed him. And people were amazed. And a crowd gathered. And it gave Peter and John an opportunity to talk more. And so Peter being the ver verbose one, Peter launched into a great sermon as that crowd was gathered and he began to lay out God's plan of salvation. He shared the gospel and people responded. We find there that as he, as he prayed, 
the people were, were touched their hearts and many believed. And as they were speaking then, it's interesting in chapter 4 it begins, as they were speaking to the people right there, the priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them. And they were greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And they laid hands on them, and they put them in jail until the next day. For it was already evening. And many of those who had heard the message believed. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. God is doing a great work in the church in Jerusalem at that time in the first century. But you can see, begin to, as you read there, there's trouble that was brewing. The authorities, religious leaders, didn't like that. And so the noose was going to be tightening around the neck of the church. And so Peter and John were brought in for questioning. And they're challenged there. And they said, what in the world are you doing? And they said to one another, the, the religious leaders in Acts 4, verse 16, what shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all referring to the healing of the lame beggar back in chapter 3. But so that it will not spread any further among the people. The leader said, let us warn them to speak no longer to any man in this name. And so when they summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it's right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to to God, you be the judge, for we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. But the authorities warned them, said you must stop speaking. You must withdraw. You can go and worship and celebrate together in your, your home churches. But we don't want you to spread this among the people and throughout the city. So Peter and John had a choice. What do we do with this? And Peter boldly said, well, we will continue to speak of what we know to be true, of how God is working. And so the story continues on. Peter and John, having been arrested, they're threatened. Eventually they will be beaten and flogged. And the church is threatened with that persecution is at their doorstep. And what do they do? Well, they call together a church council, a prayer meeting, in a sense. And then they gather together, verse 23 of chapter 4. When Peter and John had been released, they went to their own companions, back to the church, and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them, the warnings they'd been given, the arrest, and the fact that persecution was at the doorstep and would be coming that the circumstances were changing, that the church was now going to be threatened. The church had a choice to make. How do we respond? What does God want us to do? Do we hunker down and protect ourselves? Or do we move forward and allow God to do something new and even greater in the church? I wonder if we're at such a time as that. As we confront the coronavirus and we see and read about what's going on here in Italy and how it's really brought certain sections of the country of Italy to its knees, standstill. In the United States, the same is taking place as our leaders wonder, how do we respond to this? What do we do in response to the coronavirus? How do we deal with it? Does the sh church shrink back, tighten the circle? circle the wagons? Or do we use this as an opportunity to learn great lessons of faith, to move forward, to allow God to teach us some kingdom-type lessons and to do an even greater work? Well, I think the response of Peter and John in the church in Acts 4 might be instructive for us as well. We find there that their, an their answers, their response to the situation of impending persecution there were three very interesting responses. In verse 24, when they heard this, the people heard the report of Peter and John, 
they lifted their voices to God. And with one accord, they said, O sovereign Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. The first spot response, those two words, sovereign Lord, characterizes their understanding that God was still in control. Not the leaders of the Jews, not the civil leaders, not the threats from the officials, but God was in control. And they expressed that. Sovereign Lord, you are the one who controls the nations, the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. You're the one who overrules all the kings of the earth, they continue on. It's instructive for us to recognize in this coronavirus, we look to our leaders to make wise decisions. We pray for them to do that. We heed their warnings, but we recognize that ultimately, God is still in control. God's in control of your family, your job, your finances, your health. God is in control of the world. The coronavirus, this pandemic, has not usurped God's control over the earth. It hasn't broken his sovereign control over the course of our lives and the protection of our families. I hope that truth gives you great encouragement. Hope for today. Hope and strength for tomorrow. That God is in control. You can count on him being in your presence, in your home, in your life, in your family. Because God's in control, we can move forward just as the church there in Jerusalem did. And they gave a second response because of their confidence that God was in control. In verse 29, they said this as they were praying together. And now, Lord, take note of their threats, the threats of the officials, and grant that your, your servants may speak your word with all boldness and confidence. Speak with great boldness. And that's their second response. They realized that God was in control, and because of that, they needn't fear. They could speak with great boldness. They could use that pending persecution, the threats from the officials, as a further opportunity to speak God's truth of the gospel. In this time of great uncertainty that they were facing, of being arrested, of perhaps being thrown in prison, which they would eventually, of even being persecuted and beaten, they saw that unexpected circumstances as an opportunity for greater faith, greater boldness. And they prayed, God, make us bold. Give us fearless speech. I think that's something that we can learn from as well. We have an opportunity maybe unprecedented for many in many decades to speak more boldly, to share hope more faithfully. Maybe it's through social media with your friends who you know are going through fearful times or feeling very lonely, very separated from family because they're overseas right now. Or maybe it's your family in the, the States who are feeling that they're separated from you and they're fearful of that. It's an opportunity for us to speak with boldness, great boldness, fearlessly, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. The fact that God is still in control, that God has a, a plan for the world, a plan for our lives, a plan for the church, a plan for our families, our neighbors, this country. And we can speak that hope to the message of the gospel. We want to be careful and and wise in how we speak and uh, we want to uh, exercise compassion and understanding for those that are fearful at this time but we have the words of hope God's peace brings to uh, he brings it to our hearts and lives in Christ Jesus and we can share that boldly and confidently with others I encourage you as I'm doing myself praying for opportunities to speak those words of hope I spoke with a man this morning who stopped by the church office to, 
do some work ar around here to bring uh, to renew the fire extinguishers and he brought them back and so we just spent some time talking together and I asked him is he he's Italian of course and I said are you fearful is your family fearful about this and you see yeah there is some fear particularly about his business because now he can't work most businesses are closed down and they he can't get into service their fire extinguishers and I encouraged him that God is still in control and that can bring hope to his family and for his business and he's a man I said if you're a man of faith God can use this in your time to even strengthen your faith so we look for opportunities to speak boldly to others during this season and then there was a third response that the church made to these threats of the of the officials to close down the church and to silence their their boldness and their voice and their preaching in verse 30 they continued to pray say God while you will you extend your hand to heal and bring signs and wonders to take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus you see they asked for God's greater power God we've seen you heal and that's what caused the initial arrest of Peter and John we've seen you heal people but we want to ask you to release your power in even greater ways to shake this city for your glory and to accomplish your mission in and through the church there in Jerusalem. I think that's instructive for us as we respond to this time of coronavirus. God, would you use this situation as uncertain as it is, as fear-producing as it can be, would you use it to release your power in even greater measure in our lives and through our church in our church and in our community God would you shake this city this country of Italy of America of your countries of Europe God would you shake them for your glory and to accomplish your mission I hope that this season of the coronavirus when you're more restricted in your movements more time at home I hope it's given you also much more time to pray to ask God to release his power in and through the church to release his power through his people and through the circumstances that surround us so that somehow our world can be shaken with the power of God and knowing that he is in control and there could be a great movement of revival in the church and a great movement of salvation in our world and in our in our country you see, we learn from what the church faced in Acts chapters 2, 3, and 4. We learn that in times of great uncertainty, those can become opportunities for great faith and fearless obedience. It can be true for us in our lives as well. I'm on it. The Soviet Union official. I encourage you to take some time, prayer, and reflection. God, help us. Help us to know that you are in control. You have not ring, you're not wringing your hands, wondering, what do I do now? You are in control, even of the coronavirus pandemic. God, help us to speak with great boldness, to use this as opportunities to express our great faith in you, to strengthen our faith. And then, God, unleash your power in even greater measures in our lives and in our church and through our church and in our communities in this country in our country home country of the united states god continue to do a great work in and th through your people during this time give us hope give us peace that's my prayer for you for our church i hope that you're encouraged by these words and maybe you take some time today or tomorrow or this week to read more carefully and take some time to go through Acts 2, 3, and 4, and discover more truth there, how God used those uncertain times in the church's life to accomplish the work of his mission, and his purpose, in and through the church in that community. And you will do the same in our community as well. If we can be of encouragement to you or help or pray for you, again, please let us know. Stay connected with us, would you? On social media, uh, by, by phone, by email, ways that uh, reach out to one another 
Uh, I pray that you'll encourage your home group members, be in touch with your home group leaders. We want to walk through this time together and be an encouragement to you. So thanks for tuning in today. We'll continue to be in touch in, in various ways that we can. We pray and we look forward to the opportunity, we hope, to be back together in person uh, in April on Palm Sunday. But stay tuned. We'll keep you posted on how that develops. So God bless you. Have a great day and a great week together with your family, with your friend, those closest to you and in friendships, and also in your walk with God. Amen. God bless.